Hello, hello there and welcome back to War Thunder, to some more naval gameplay. Today I think that I need to show you this battle and you can see with the video length it's an entire naval battle. Now I know that a lot of you are not interested in naval forces. Now a good portion of you are just interested in planes or tanks or planes and tanks and uh, a lot of you are seasoned world of warships players so you have progressed quite a bit in world of warships and you don't really think that war thunder naval forces is your thing because you're used to it but there are problems within war thunders naval forces itself that are kind of leading to what i call a self-fulfilling prophecy a lot of people are not interested in it and they say that it will be a failure Gachin is doing their utmost to fulfill this prophecy, if you will. And the other factor is, due to the fact that not a lot of people are playing it, Gachin was forced to implement bots, which repelled even more players. But at the end of the day, the core problems that this game mode has is responsible for the outrageous frustration in your gameplay experience which then repels you so you don't play the game mode and that's before we talk about the progression the income and the balance it's just the sheer overall experience of game mechanics not working the map design being the worst that i have ever seen in any video game ever period really it is the worst and uh, today's guest stars are obviously um, the three cruisers so I have the Furutaka at first and uh, I will respawn and you can see that I am already under fire and I try my utmost to battle down the enemies. Now one factor that I need to highlight and this is a little bit of a feedback video for Gaijin itself but also for you to realize what the actual problem is and it went relatively unexpectedly well for me which is not the usual experience that i have but if you just get killed and you die and you can point out all the issues people on the internet are oh you just didn't play well ha 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 but there is more behind it you see there are the game mechanics and i think that it is just absolutely phenomenally punishing to play ships especially the bigger ones because um so many so many factors play in the role that you just can't really return fire now here i have in terms of caliber the biggest most fearsome guns eight inch guns 20.3 centimeters and uh, they deliver a whole lot of world of pain of he and ap they're really good but you only have six of them. Now, that is just a sheer damage output because you miss some shells and then you miss aim and then there is the dispersion and the next thing is that the turret traverse on this ship is very, very long. Uh, so you cannot really return fire as effectively and then your gun turrets get knocked out by low caliber HE shells and then you're set on fire and then your bridge gets knocked out, you can't steer and uh, then your funnels get hit which absolutely murders your speed it's not just that it reduces it a little bit it absolutely murders it so uh, you are locked in this endless spiral of repair extinguish fire stop flooding pump the water out and uh, the repair times of the various different sections like extinguishing the fire stopping the flooding repairing modules they just amplify each other. So if you get set on fire while you repair, you not just have double the fire extinguishing time, but also more than twice the repair time. And that also affects your reload. And on a ship that has a long reload, that is absolutely punishing. The next thing is when we talk about the balance. Before I come to this very match, um, I actually managed to make a turn. Can you believe it? I turned a light cruiser, or in this case, the first prototype heavy cruiser, around. Oh my god, I have not done this in any match, period. And, uh, you know, I just came back from a week break from War Thunder. I didn't play ships before that on a regular basis for weeks. I'm coming back and I'm having this match and it all comes back. 
it's a massive disaster. And the title of the video is why we can't have nice things. And this is the reason because of all this frustration of the gameplay being punishing and not rewarding. You're not having fun and you struggle, not against the enemy, but versus the game itself, the map design, the balance, the repair times and all this, that you get salty, that you have this sour feeling in your guts, that you just don't really want to play it. Now, I love playing ships and I want War Thunder Naval Forces to become a success. But the stubborn refusal of just fixing the game is absolutely outrageous. And this is not a rant. This is not me swearing and cursing and shouting. This is just a description of what it actually is. This is your experience game after game after game after game after game. And that's before we come to the game mode where it's all about caps. And you see that I need to keep the distance, that I need to defend myself with angling versus enemy cruisers. And uh, there are more of them. And we are shooting each other right from the spawn, right? And I already have lost a lot of crew. I already have taken quite a battering. I tried to launch all my torpedoes. I try to gun them down one by one, prioritizing the most uh, crucial target. So here I had nearly 150 seconds repair time when the fire came online. And uh, now look, look at this, look at this. I need to interrupt the repair of a potentially vital system. The damage mechanics, the cause of frustration is just too much it needs to be tuned down and this is with the best crews that you can imagine and yes those are some ridiculously awesome shots but they are a rarity and they just put a very brief smile on your face before you need to focus on the next target before you get set on fire again before you have to repair again i know that naval forces videos are not really the most beloved part of my content. I could have so many more subscribers and so many more views per video if I would just make top tier tank kill compilations with some fancy music and I know that this is how YouTube works but this is about passion, this is about me being in love with a principle but I'm absolutely outrageously frustrated by the way that it is done. And this is not just for a week or a month. This is the way for years by now. Naval forces are still in beta, right? It's officially open beta, but it is, there are so many basic flaws. Look, I need to keep the distance and I still cannot go to the capture zone. I am to the outcome of the game completely irrelevant because I cannot go to the objective. Heavy cruisers and light cruisers are absolutely pointless on this map in particular because two of the capture zones are in the PT boat area. And the problem with this is that the destroyers and the cruisers already automatically go into the PT boat area where then PT boats have no fun against them except for the most overpowered ones or the most capable ones where you can ambush burst down a destroyer in the uh, project 159 etc and that cannot be it right so it's the same repetitive gameplay over and over and over and over and over again that is sad that is bad and uh, why we can't have nice things i don't know i don't know what gaijin really wants to uh, reach with this kind of development cycle maybe gaijin has a master plan maybe gaijin has a final concept but we as players and even me as a youtuber have no clue what they try to achieve yes there are some ships that are really great in performance that just fit the meta especially when we look at the cruisers the kirov is still the big boss it still has an incredible rate of fire for those high caliber guns that just pack more TNT in both the HE shell and the semi armor piercing with incredible damage output and incredible performance and accuracy. And uh, the only ship that is better is the Brooklyn that just has this incredible effective 
armor layout and uh, the insane amount of guns and rate of fire and damaging shells. So that combined with the defensive uh, versus aircraft and proximity fuses etc. It just makes every other cruiser completely obsolete. And this is why this battle was so phenomenal because I didn't come across them. I actually could do something. But believe me, the frustration of not being able to fire with insane long reloads of the guns, etc., uh, is just outrageous. By the way, I love the fact that my long launch torpedoes are hitting actually something. Because previously, minutes ago, I launched them in a direction, in a pattern, where I knew that there is a lot of ship traffic. And then a bit of luck, and I got, by, by now, two player kills with them. Uh, so that is absolutely fun and it's it's those short moments where you can see what naval forces are able to do please don't confuse this statement with me getting a kill or having success it's about the overall gameplay experience for the other side and for uh, my side then there are for example uh, little issues like you get a lock on in third person over an uh, on an enemy over the island but when you get then in the gunner's view if you will uh, or the aiming modes then the lost then the uh, contact is lost uh, beautiful kill here by the way on a summoner uh, the thing is this why can't we have nice things look we need maps where you where you spawn and you make a decision in which direction do I go? In which direction can I really make the most out of the ship's abilities? Does it have armor? Does it have superior firepower? Or is it very fast? Does it have a lot of torpedoes? Uh, do I want to go after enemy capital ships? In this case, in War Thunder, like destroyers and cruisers. Or do I want to, uh, you know, win the far cap? And look, I just can't do anything. I just can't do anything to go into the cap. It's so close, yet so far. And, uh, you know, if there are planes coming in like this. He was already shot down. He launches the torpedo. And only because uh, his wing was shot off, he couldn't aim the torpedo properly. But those American, uh, uh, those American torpedo bombers, they are absolutely ridiculously overperforming versus the ships especially versus those 25 millimeters and the uh, um, time fuse flux shells if you will so many issues oh my god then there is the revenge killing mentality then at the moment as you will see later on there is the torpedo tasks you need to sink so many ships to fulfill the task to get the reward ship etc and uh, then as you can see at the moment, my team has uh, is equal in terms of caps, but you have to see it. It's a it's again this throwaway mentality that I talked about in a duck talks uh, weeks ago that I despise. In order to now secure the game, it is better to bail out of a cruiser that is still functioning, accepting the repair costs. By the way, gifting the enemy team a kill. And to just simply jump into a patrol boat and capture the points, which is so, so, so close to the PT boat, uh, to the PT boat spawn, where we spawn camp each other from your camp and the objective. Oof. Just oof. Now, if you are really wondering if this is just a massive rant video and me just, yeah, I don't like this video, no. The thing is this. As I said in the beginning, I love the principle that uh, Gaijin is doing. I love that I see a slow but steady increase in firepower and uh, in, in gun caliber so you can enjoy the force of those ships. Imagine like just battleships being implemented. You get your Yamato, you play probably a dozen of games and uh, then that's it. And you say, ah, ah, I've seen now everything in Naval Forces. The thing is, I know that it is a harsh learning process for Gaijin, but the most basic things are just implemented in a way where, again, it uh, creates pure frustration. Uh, the inequality and all the data that Gaijin gets is massively flawed due to the fact that uh, 
the puzzle doesn't fit into the picture, if you know what I mean. So, the map design has a massive, massive, massive influence on how ships can be played, on which chances they get offered. But you are right at there at the spawn, and uh, you get spawn camp from the middle of the map or from the enemy spawn. And if there are enemies uh, spawning in Brooklands and you are in your, well, in another cruiser basically, what can you do? You are sentenced to die. There is not much that you can do. That's sadly how it is. So skill is taken away. The usefulness of respawning is taken away. You're wasting so much time um, just trying to get to the objective, then your funnels get knocked out, your crew gets knocked out on, 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 with a bridge hit, your firepower gets knocked out, you get set on fire and all those things combined just leave you dead in the water just waiting to be finished off. And that is not fun. That is also not historically accurate and it's not balanced. So Gaijin has absolutely budgeted the holy trilogy of game design, making a fun, balanced and in this case what Gaijin advertises, historically accurate game. They have screwed it up massively and there is sadly no silver lining on the horizon. What we will see in Naval Forces is the very same that we see with Air RP and Tank RP. We see new stuff piled on top of broken stuff and the new stuff by itself is broken because there will be no uh, there will be no quality control and the quality control that Gaijin has fails over and over and over and over again repeatedly every single time not just for the last two patches not just for the last two years since the very beginning and even if Gaijin would really process all those bug reports and all those suggestions the sheer amount of work of redoing the work again and again just keeps them from implementing stuff that works where it fills gaps where it brings balance and where people can have fun so you can say that Gaijin still gets away with it if you look at the player numbers if you potentially calculate through uh, according to the average player how much he spends per month or overall uh, on the game that Gaijin makes a profit the problem is that the way that they are doing it is unhealthy and this is also reflected at best in Evil Forces the hype that is behind aircraft and the new jets and the new premiums and the new ranks for um, both aircraft and tanks keeps those game modes liquid, if you know what I mean. You're going to a battle, you have short queue times, you have a lot of players. In Naval Forces, Gaijin has quenched it right from the start. Gaijin has made decision after decision securing that nobody plays it. And this is reflected in the queue times, this is reflected in the amount of players per match and in the necessi necessity for Gaijin to implement bots to create matches after all. And this is repetitive, it's boring, you get no income, it's just not really fulfilling and due to the map design and the overall uh, how the matchmaker works etc. It's just so many things are taken out of your hand, out of your control that at the moment it is completely irrelevant playing naval forces and that is sad again i love the concept of gaching bringing naval forces to war thunder i think and i know that it has a lot of potential by the way uh nice torp here look at the arming distance uh, i had no chance i can't turn and i'm really salty at this moment I, I spent minutes trying to go the objective to gun down the enemies where you have to angle where you have to uh, bring all the guns to bear to really go in a straight line to secure the maximum very best aiming and look I'm now respawning and uh, I try to go to the objective for the rest of the match I am not able to get back and I have a conversation with this guy. And yes, I know that I write in chat here, fuck you. I'm not really salty at this dude. 
I'm salty at just him dropping a torpedo and just killing me in a revenge kill attempt or for fulfilling the torpedo task and me spending so much and he just YOLOing in and my anti-aircraft batteries not working I had no chance and this is the absolute perversion of rock paper scissors if you implement rock paper scissor right but the rock of one nation just can absolutely delete paper and scissor of other nations and also the rock of another nation while you know the scissor is not the game mode's name giver you know it's in this case uh <laughs> ship rp ship realistic battles but it's more about aircraft having such a huge influence and i desperately try to go to the uh i try to go to the far cap i need to decap it but at this point it would be smarter to just go into a patrol boat and just capture it but i don't want to play patrol boat capturing capture zone war thunder but i want to play war thunder where it's about big guns and it's about ships shooting ships it's so easy but it's not relevant that's the problem and i could i could name things i could give you examples i could run down the numbers i could do so much and i have done so much in the past i've taken breaks after breaks after breaks trying to revive my interest in naval forces to really advertise the game out again i have sacrificed views and subscriber numbers to get the content out because i was interested in because i wanted it to succeed and because i wanted to show gaijin look this is what i disagree with look this is the current state of naval forces because it is obvious that war thunder's devs are not playing the same game they probably play war thunder okay at this moment i have received word oh you know there is so much time that the devs need to play the game etc and they are ordered to do so and they have uh, at gaijin headquarters they have like a leaderboard of how much time every dev uh, plays playing the game but i don't know what they're doing are they probably playing reserve tanks reserve planes they are not playing the game where it matters they are not really dragging in the statistics where it's really important and the same issues prevail over and over and over again and there is nothing that i can do it's just the sheer frustration coming from the mistakes being simple easy to fix it's not a problem of coding it's not a problem of uh, historical documentation or where you could say ah oh, yeah it was lost in the world war ii era it was burned uh, whatever no this is a problem of simply a design decision this map for cruisers is dreadful and there are other maps such as mediterranean port where heavy cruisers still spawn five kilometers from each other not even being able to just simply turn the turrets and give off one or two salvos before being disabled and shot to pieces by some overperforming light cruiser and that game after game after game where heavy cruisers and light cruisers are still irrelevant because of this uh, capture the point thing which makes absolutely no sense and i was trying another game mode another game mode on the weekend when i came home from the festival i was tired i was driving 800 kilometers i was uh cleaning up all the stuff and i was even doing some work and then i sat down in front of the pc and i was like look new game mode i want to test it i want to try it and i waited 50 minutes in the queue uh, i posted the picture on twitter wow Th this is the current state of naval forces it's absolutely neglected uh, nobody at gaijin seems to have interest in it becoming a, a success the same basic fundamental flaws are still theirs and as long as they are not fixed map design economy balance game mechanics and uh, the repair mechanics as long as those things are not addressed we cannot have nice things